One of the best ways to grow your business is through content. We're going to show you in this episode how you can use content to create a whole lot of good, build your sales, and do a lot more. And joining me to help on that is my partner, Gina Carr. Gina, there's a lot going on with content today. Why do you think content is such a great idea for building a business, particularly for entrepreneurs? Well, because it really helps to establish your credibility, your knowledge, to let other people know what it is that you are a specialist in. We talk all the time about who you serve and the problem that you solve. And so content is a great way to keep that on top of your mind, as well as people who are watching you, people who are prospects or people who are current clients. You want to constantly re reinforce who you serve and the problem you solve. And content's one of the best ways to do that. Yeah, I think so, because it creates a bond. When you have that content that's solving a real problem, people feel, ooh, I like what she has to say. I like what he has on his channel. I want to watch that and learn. And so we're going to go through seven steps that you can use. Take down notes on this. If you want this is time to get out your pencil and paper, or pen and paper, or your note-taking choice of, of uh, whatever you like to use. <laughs> yeah, use that. Whatever it is you use, your note-taking device of choice, make it happen. And it starts with step number one which is research. And the research, you want to study two things. Number one, I think you want to look at the marketplace. What is the market looking for right now? And then number two, your skills. What can you do? Where are you best? Are you good at writing? Are you good at doing audio and video? Often video is a good way to start, like we do here at Stark Raving Entrepreneurs. We start with video, and then we can take that and repurpose it. And I think it's got a lot of good on that. Gina, those are the two that I'm seeing. You've been around a lot of people that are creating content. You've created a lot of content yourself. What do you think of those two particular issues? Well, I think that that's a great way to start uh, research, basically introspection, because uh, you want to be sure that you are creating the brand that you want to be creating, that uh, that you want to be doing, putting yourself out into the world about. So, for example, I talk about that, that you want to get clarity and a way to get clarity is to look at your skills, your expertise and your passions as well as where you can make money. So when you look at that Venn diagram and the intersection of those, that's where you have the research of the market, uh, putting those things together so that you'll know what, what's the best thing for you to work on. Yeah, I think so. One of the tools that we use is TubeBuddy, and they have a feature called Keyword Explorer that is available. So we can try all kinds of ideas for titles. Titles are very important. One of the most important on YouTube, your thumbnail. Because that's the first thing people are going to see. Do they like it? And you want them to go, hmm, hey, what's going on with that? I want to find out about it. So getting a good thumbnail, then getting a good title, those are critical when you do it. But I think in the second area, you want to collect the data, the information, lots of ideas. That means when you get an idea that whacks you upside the head, don't just think, oh, gee, I'll remember that. No, you know, has that ever happened to somebody? You know, it does that. But then what happens? You forget it. You go, ah, because guess what? You too can be a human being. Well, what you want to do is when that happens, what you want to do is have a place to hold it. Gina, you're using places where you keep ideas so, so that when you're putting down and putting a post together that uh, you can refer to that. Tell us a little bit about how you collect ideas and then use those. Well, my main source for that is Google Docs. I, I love Google Docs because I can access it from any device. It's stored on the cloud. So I know that even if my devices go bad or I lose them or they corrupted, that this information will, will be there. So that's, that's my main source. If for some reason I'm having trouble connecting with Google, Google Docs, I can use on the Mac, I use my notes feature. And then on my Android, I use my notes feature here, my Samsung Note 20 and I use the notes feature there. But I love the Google Docs because it's there. I can access it from anywhere. Yeah, I like that. I use Google Docs on my laptop and I'll also use it on my smartphones. I have iOS and Android. It works beautifully either way. And so that's a good place to grab those ideas. And I think another thing you want to do is you want to look at a variety of views so that you can hear what this side is saying about something and then what the other side is saying. And then maybe there's this and then that one too. We like the idea of getting a, com a component a composition, I guess the word I'm looking for, a good composition of a lot of them that you put together. And then you can say, here are different points of views and I'm um, doing that. And I like the Google Doc because it really is a place where you can put all of it very easily, very carefully. So always be on the lookout for 
new points of view and ways that you can better help your audience. And the third step in the content creation process is production. You're going to produce things. You're going to be able to get a lot of ideas. And how are you going to do that? Well, there's several ways to do it. One way is you can do an interview. Interview works really well and kind of doing that back and forth. Even though we're not doing an interview tonight, it's nice that as we're recording this on this evening here, that we can then talk together. And Gene, I like having you there on getting your ideas, talking with you, getting ideas. What do you see are some ways of we, that we get a lot of advantage from using interviews? Well, it seems like it's always easier for most people to talk to someone else than to just constantly be talking to themselves. They feel like they're in an echo chamber. There's no feedback. There's no anything. And so it does seem to make sense and uh, easier for people to talk to someone else. Yeah, I think there's a place for that. But then there's also a place for standalone, where you have just one person on the screen talking, maybe bringing in some B-roll or some pictures, things like that. And that's good. It's getting your opinion and you build your audience that way. So I see that as a good way to do it. And then another way you can do it is with uh, something we use a lot, Gina, is screen sharing. We're not doing that on this particular episode, but where we can share the screen and say, okay, here's what an article said and be able to use it that way. I think those are pretty good. And then we get into video and there's a lot of tools out there. Gina, you and I both use a lot of different tools. What are some of the tools that you've seen that have been particularly helpful that you're using and that you hear others are using? Well, I personally love StreamYard. StreamYard is something that I have to used for many years. It's very easy to use. It's easy to live stream to a number of different platforms at once. It's easy just to do recordings of yourself or other people in an interview style. And you can set up some nice lower thirds. You can use some logos or things like that if you want to so that it makes it easy. And you don't have to do a lot of editing and post. You can just share what you want to share right there as you are doing the the video. And then another one that I hear a lot of good things about, I really haven't used it much, I think you've used it a lot more than I have, is uh, Big View. I know a lot of members of our Star Craving Entrepreneurs community, you've taught them how to use it and they rave about Big View, about how easy it is to use, how easy it is to use the teleprompter and the teleprompter even lets you use AI to help you write scripts now. And so you can use it on your phone, you can use it on your computer, on your laptop or your desktop. And so those are the two that I would say are my favorites. Yeah, there's some real goods. I like using uh, both of them. I don't use StreamYard as much. I used Restream for a long time. Great little tool. I loved it and still recommend it highly. But right now we're using Ecamm. That's what we're using right now to create this. And the reason is it gives us the ability to have oh, all the different scenes, they call it. Like, for instance, here's one scene that I've set up with me on the screen. Then here's the other one I've set up with the two of us together. And then another one, Gina, with you alone. That works really well. And we put them together. So you want to get a tool that works for you. Ecamm is one I use a lot. And by the way, another tool you can use just your phone. If you're just getting started, you say, how do I get started? You can use your phone, particularly if you've got a more late model phone. Some of the most recent phones really have great quality. And I would highly recommend take a look at using those, work with them and get to know them, get something that's going to work for you. And another tool that you'll use, audio. Audio, of course, we can create here and we take this audio and we repurpose it over to our podcast. So those of you joining us on the podcast, hello, we did this on Ecamm and being able to put it in there for you. There's something about audio and podcasts that I really like. Gina, I know you've been listening to podcasts for a long time and you're very audio oriented. What do you like about audio as a communication for content creation? Well, the main thing I like about audio is that I can listen to it at any time and and I don't have to be watching a screen to get the full effect to to know what's going on. So that's that's been really good. What what's not great about it is that when I get a good idea, I generally need to stop and open either another device or use that device to make some notes or have a piece of paper, which I don't like to make notes on paper. I'd rather do it on a device so that I have it uh, for longer term and ease and better organized. So that's what I like about audio. And, and I did find a new app called Snip, S-N-I-P-D, that allows you to essentially take a clip as you're listening to a podcast from that player. You can take a clip from there 
And it's almost like a highlighted version and you have these short clips that you can use. I, I'm really enjoying that. I've just started using it, but I encourage people to try that out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into that. I've not tried it yet, but it seems like it'd be really handy because you get one of those ideas, you go, oh, that was really good. You can just grab it and then store it in there. So that's audio and there's a lot you can do with that. We love podcasting, we love using audio, but also text. Text works really well, and particularly now that we've got the tools like ChatGPT and others so that you can put your initial text in there. One of the things we recommend is put in your text that you would write, then take it to ChatGPT or Perplexity and have those tools analyze what's going on. Say, clean this up, check for grammar, check for spelling, make it a little bit bolder, or make sure that I've said it right, or if I've said three points here, give me two additional that tie into it. All kinds of ways that you can use that. And so text can be very good, and we recommend using that. And then also pictures. And Gina, you really have helped me a lot on that, of taking pictures for creating content in many different ways. What do you use for taking your pictures? What kind of tools are you using? And what do you recommend when someone is taking pictures? Well, for my own pictures, I really enjoy using my Galaxy Note 20. 20. It works really well. It has a great camera. And I'm switching soon, or at least my plan is to switch soon to an iPhone, or at least to add that and to to give that a try. iPhone 15 Plus has arrived and is uh, yet to be put into commission, but we'll have fun experimenting with the photos there. And I love creating photos using ChatGPT, the plus version, and using Dolly. That's been really great to create some beautiful custom images for our marketing, for the marketing we do for our agency clients. And we've recommended it to our members of our Star Craving Entrepreneurs community and clients, and they are loving it and having great success with it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of benefit to that. So those are good when you're producing. And then finally get that uh, edit, that co- piece of content put together, particularly if you've got video. Then you can take that and do a lot of things with it. But one of the first things you're going to need to do is editing. And editing is one of those things where there's some controversy on this. Some people have preference in different ways that you do it or that you get someone. I think there's a place for both. Right now, we're doing the editing because, hey, we can do it. I know Ecamm, and I know Camtasia for Mac. That's what I'm using. Now, there are many other good tools out there for this. You can use Adobe Premiere. You can use uh, other tools. And the ideal is that you do something so you don't have to do as much editing. By using a tool like Ecamm or Restream or StreamYard or several other tools are out there, OBS is another very good one that's open domain, open source, meaning that it's free. And there's a lot of support for that as well. This way you can put in those different cuts. You can have that in there and you don't have to do it with editing. Although I do love Camtasia for Mac because they have a lot of features in there that give us a lot of capabilities for that. And I think the editing can be good. Now, a disadvantage of uh, farming it out to someone else, letting them do it, is it takes more time. When you do it yourself, I find I can generally do it faster, but there's a lot to be said for sending that video over to someone else and letting them handle that. And so those are some of the good tools. Gina, you've seen editing from a different point of view because you're not doing it actively, but you've heard a lot about it. What would be your sage advice on editing what we need to know about that? Well, I'm definitely in the camp of of hire it out because as a content creator, by definition, you're probably pretty on top of your game and know a lot. So your time and energy is probably better used creating more content and let someone else do the editing. That's that's what I would recommend. And it kind of goes back to my days of studying industrial engineering and uh, just believing in the whole highest and best use of real estate, which is my background. I did a lot in real estate, highest and best use of the real estate, but it applies to people as well. Uh, David Ricardo principle, right? Yeah, exactly. The economist from England back in the uh, 1700s, I believe. And he said, find out what you can do best and then you hire the rest. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. For me, I like putting in the uh, creative energy that I can use when I can bring in a B-roll where it's appropriate or an extra graphic or something like that. And I do it and then I do it very quickly. That's only because I know how to do it and I can do it. And also I enjoy it. So that's another thing that adds to it. All of that is really important. Okay, once you've gone through the editing, you've got all that ready to go. Your next step is scheduling or posting. Usually we do scheduling. What we'll do is we'll take the video that we have and we'll put that up onto YouTube 
after we've gone through Keyword Explorer and the SEO suite that we have in TubeBuddy, that works really beautifully. We can then schedule it for a given time, given place, and everything comes together. All the elements come into that as they should. The scheduling is really good, and I think that's something that uh, we need to look at. And I would recommend for producing to do a lot of content. I'm a big fan of what Gary V talks about, Gary Vaynerchuk, when he talks about producing a lot of content. I think you want to produce good quality content, but make sure that you can use the tools that let you put that out even faster all the time. Gina, what are your thoughts on scheduling and putting it out and posting? Well, I know that a lot of people, including us, do like to use tools that allow us to post in advance. And so I think that that can work okay. You just need to be sure to be around when the post comes out so that you can communicate. Uh, You don't want to just put something out into the world and there's crickets. Uh, You, As people start engaging with the post, you want to comment back to them. You want to thank them. You want to ask some questions, answer questions, those sorts of things. And when you do that, you're going to have a lot better engagement on your post. But you do need to be careful when you're posting in advance that you don't, you don't miss some sort of holiday that's coming up, uh, and, and inappropriately post something that would be coming out on a special holiday that, ooh, that's just not cool. As well, if there are, catastrophes happening in the world. You don't want to be tone deaf to things that are happening. And over the past few years, we've had a number of really bad things that have happened and probably going to continue on. And so you want to be sensitive to be able to have a pause button on your amplifier that you can pause it or have some system so that you can can stop your posts pretty quickly and easily. Judy, you raise a very good point there because there could be something, let's say major tragedy happens and you've got a post that's going out that's real happy and upbeat. It's going to seem like, okay, you're not really in tune or we know you put that out before this thing happened. It would be good to be able to pull that down if you need or modify it or maybe something really good happened that ties in with your production and you want to come on and say, hey, and we know that such and such happened uh, that really helped and affirmed what we were talking about. So be able to have a bit of uh, fluidity in there. Build that in as you're working with it. I think that's going to be a real critical. Oh, and there's one other thing we want to make sure you realize when you're scheduling. YouTube does a good job of it. We're also using Libsyn. L-I-B-S-Y-N, Libsyn for our podcast. They do a great job there. Very reasonably priced as well. And then we also use Kartra. K-A-R-T-R-A, Kartra, which we use for sending out our email. That's been pretty good. And Gina, you're the queen of that. You really know Kartra. What do you like about it and how does that contribute to the idea of content creation and dissemination? Well, it's an absolutely fantastic tool at helping you create all kinds of assets, including registration pages, sales pages, your membership programs and and such. But as it relates to getting our content out, it's our email service as as well as all these other things that I mentioned. And so we create our emails there. They go to our members. They go to different groups. They go to prospects. And so we're increasingly bearish, bullish, I guess would be the word, bullish on using email. (laughs) Yes, bullish, not bearish. Yes, on using email to to get our message out and to develop a stronger relationship with the members of our community and with our subscribers. All right, that's good. Now, number six, and I'm looking over here in my notes here to make sure we get this right, is promo amplification and repurposing. What you want to do on that is you want to take this message. Now that it's out there in the world, it's not going to just be a place where people are going to go, oh, wow, Terry has produced a video. We must go watch that. No, we've got to act actively promote it. And we do that through a few tools. We use uh, direct posting onto the platforms like LinkedIn and put it into Facebook, things like that. But we also schedule it to go out and we use a tool called Vista social that we just started a few weeks ago. Using that tool, it has done very well. And we like what it can do. It gives us the ability to send it to our Facebook groups, send it to uh, various pages on Facebook. We can send it to LinkedIn. We send it out to X, formerly known as Twitter. We can send it out all over to many different platforms. And that's a good way to let people know about it. 
And then repurposing is important. Now, Jen, I want to get your thoughts on this because repurposing means you're taking something that you've got that's really good and you can pull out the audio of it or you can get a snippet of it and tell people about it. We're using a few tools on that. Jen, what's the purpose and the point of repurposing? Well, a lot of people don't have the time to watch something that's longer or they don't think they have the time, but if they've watched a short clip, and they like it, then they might go watch the full thing. Uh, certainly we've seen this for decades since movies started and movie trailers started. You see a quick one to three minute movie trailer. Oh, that looks good. I want to go watch the whole movie. Uh, Joe Rogan in modern era and modern media used this very effectively with his, he had a three hour long podcast, the three hour long videos. Well, people wouldn't go watch those unless they had seen the clips. And, and when they saw his, uh, it's called JR, Joe, JR, JR clips, something like that, the Joe Rogan experience clips, Rogan. short clips that were 10 to 12 minutes or so that were intriguing and pulled you in and said, Oh, I got to go see more of that. So then you'd go find the long form and perhaps watch the full video. I, I know that this was a big key to his success. Yeah, I think that's the key. So what you want to do is you do your long form, maybe an interview, for instance, do that interview, but then go in and grab snippets of it. And you can do that very easily. And by the way, one of the tools that we use extensively that can help us a lot, we just applaud them immensely here, that is Cast Magic. Cast Magic is a tool that lets you take your audio, put it in there, and then it comes back showing you excerpts of it, giving you clips that you can use and areas that you can use over and over again. You'll see that in our descriptions. By the way, if you're a content creator, read our descriptions. You'll see what we put in there and where we do it, particularly over on our blog, where we give you even more rich information, including uh, keywords that are there. You get a chance to see those coming in. You also get a chance to see Spanish summary that's something we can do very easily, and it works very nicely with uh, Cast Magic. Uh, I just love it. So we've got Opus Clip, got Vista Social. We're using um, many other tools that are out there, and so we and we keep changing it all the time as new tools come on the market. I like that. And then Gina, number seven. Finally, when we get all of this done, it circles right back around to research again on how things work, do the analysis and do a critique of what's going on. So as we begin by studying the market and studying our tools and skills, we go back to that. So we're looking at how we did. Tools like TubeBuddy help us to do that. VidIQ also is very good for analyzing how your video is doing. And one that we really like a lot is Content Cloud. Content Cloud gives us the ability to see how we're doing. And even more, one thing we didn't mention for getting ideas. So as you're getting more ideas, Content Cloud works really well. So Gina, there's a lot there <laughs> on that. How, what would you say to the person who's saying, oh my goodness, there's so much to do, it seems overwhelming? Well, I would say just take it step by step, take baby steps. And of all these steps, if there's only one, start with one. Start with one where you feel like you need to, to do the most work right now. Because maybe you're already doing steps one through four. Maybe you need to do some work on step five. Maybe you need to clarify where are you going to repurpose and how. Maybe you need to bring some people onto your team. That's certainly another way or outsource a lot of this. That you can outsource a lot of the repurposing and amplification and all of that. Uh, but you continue to focus on the high quality content creation. Absolutely. Won't well, focus on that because this is the way for you to bond with your audience. They get a chance to know you. They get a chance to kind of feel like they know you and like you uh, a lot, and then they can trust you more. That know, like, and trust, that comes together. Well, we want to hear from you. If you like this, please let us know. If you don't like it, please let us know. We want to hear from you in the comments, wherever you're watching this or listening to it. We appreciate you investing your time, and we wish you the best. Now, if you've got some questions and you say, yeah, but I got a question about producing content, we can help you on that. We want to do that at our Stark Raving Entrepreneurs at StarkRavingEntrepreneurs.com. We do that regularly. So we're helping you on that. But drop us a note here if you got a quick question of how do we do this or what do you think about that? We're here to help you. I'm Terry Brock, joined by Gina Carr. We really appreciate you joining us and look forward to seeing you next time.